All right, pretty exciting. Not only is this the first patio day of the season for us, it is the first time the four of us are recording together in person. Great place to do it. We're here at the new Cilantro and Chive in Red Deer with owner Riley K. Uh, you know, normally, Riley, I say thanks for joining us, but thanks for having us. This is this is awesome. This is a pretty good Monday morning, I got to say. <laughs> Great start to the week. <laughs> it's great to have you guys out here and getting this patio kicked off. I love it. So let's just start off. You know what? Tell us a bit about cilantro and chive. You know, you own the one in Lacombe as well, just open here in Red Deer. But that you don't stop there too. You, you also own Moe's Pizza in Lacombe yep. and you have a, an online shop as well. So first, just tell us about, about all of those. Well, cilantro and chive originally started in Pinoca back in 2012 and uh, we had some fun with a lot of craft beers there and a uh, local themed menu and uh, building sold lease came to an end and we were on the hunt for a new location and we moved to Lacombe in 2015 and uh, did a lot of renovations there which was really fun and we opened uh, took over Moe's Pizza just around the corner back in uh, 2018 I guess I think have to check that fact but uh, <laughs> uh, and then uh, this fall winter some background noise, no big. Uh, this fall, winter, we uh, we opened up a marketplace across the street from Cilantro and Chive with a little bit more of a hometown-esque market, a uh, little community pride, Bentley, Gull Lake, Lacombe-esque merchandise. Uh, that's just moved to an online store here recently. And uh, a month ago, we opened up Cilantro and Chive in Red Deer. So we have a few things on the go and a few uh, partners in a lot of things. My wife's a great supporter and uh, encourage her as well, as much as she says she doesn't, but... It's uh, it's awesome. And so what led to the decision to, to to come to Red Deer? Obviously, maybe 20 hours of sleep a week was too much <laughs> for you or what? Uh, you know, it's been, as from what we've seen, been a great start. And obviously, the city is excited to have you. What what made you guys decide to not just move to Red Deer, but add a second restaurant? Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, maybe there was an hour I wasn't sleeping at night and figured, heck, that's a good idea to, to do something else too. But we had a lot of staff that were kind of hitting the, uh, the ceiling of their potential in Lacombe. So being able to open this as well, gave them a lot of opportunity to grow and spread their wings and step into some new roles. So we're pretty excited to be in Red Deer and be a part of that community and a part of the food scene. But the community has been awesome support, man. It's been incredible seeing everybody in here and Smiles on faces and food on plates and beers and glasses. Riley, you talk about community and, you know, when I think of Slancher and Chive, I think of how you started in, in Pinoca and, and the community that you built there and, and then in Lacombe and, you know, me and my wife were so excited about Slancher and Chive coming to Red Deer just because, you know, we didn't have to drive the 30 minutes down the road, but maybe touch a little bit on uh, your community thoughts and, and really what, what that means to you. Our, our community is everything to us. I mean, the support we get from our guests is allows us to do what we do each and every day. So, I mean, it's it's incredible that people still come out and support us and still come out in droves and even through the lockdowns and the support that we've got through takeout and just being able to be here today is, is a challenge and, and something that we don't take for granted by any stretch. There's a lot of restaurants that have shut down through this and it's uh, it's been a tough go, but our community is everything to us. And that's, uh, I mean, with the burger of the month that we'll touch on here shortly is just another way that we can be able to give back to those people that give us, give to us so willingly and freely. So Riley, have you, uh, have you always wanted to, to work in the restaurant industry or did you just kind of wake up one morning and decide, you know what, <laughs> let's just hop into this, this risky, yeah. risky industry and give it a shot. Seemed like a good idea. Uh, no, I started washing dishes working in a restaurant in small town, Alberta. Thought I knew everything, moved my way up and uh, went to college at uh, SAIT and took the professional cooking program there and found out real quickly I knew nothing about restaurants <laughs> at all. Uh, Chef Turner, she, she beat it into me that I knew nothing. It was, uh, it was a pretty humbling experience. And then just worked around the province at a few different places and met a girl and followed her around the province and <laughs> landed us in Lacombe for, I think we said we had a five-year plan and that was about 17 years ago. So she stuck. Well, and we'll get into, you talk about the community support. And I think the four of us know a little bit about that because we, we wouldn't even be doing this. We wouldn't be sitting here right now. And I got to tell a story because a couple <laughs> weeks ago, you know, we've, we've interacted a bit on social media. Cilantro and Chive has been awesome at, at following us and supporting us. And you sent me a message or sent us a message that said, hey, do you have time to chat tomorrow? And I told these guys, oh, my God, I hope they're going to ask us to do a burger of the month. 
because you know something you've been doing a bit and, and before we get into it uh tell us a bit about the burger of the month you know how that started and it's been an incredible supporter of the community thus far yeah it's uh it's definitely grown into something that we never imagined and never could have predicted uh that we'd be here today and i think we're 50 burger 50 50 months into it with uh the two locations now but uh it's absolutely incredible. Uh, Lori McIntosh, Miss uh, Mac, I'm going to get emotional talking about this, and, but uh, she was, she's an incredible woman, um, kindergarten teacher in Lacombe, and she asked me to come and read a story to their kindergarten class, and it was a uh, hamburger heaven, and uh, Pinky Pig's working at this restaurant, and she's getting her hours cut because the restaurant's kind of sucking and whatnot, and so she creates this new menu, launches it, and and then they're sold out Friday night and she's able to get a raise and afford a clarinet. So if you were going to read the story, I apologize for that spoiler. But uh, <laughs> the the best part after that was these kids got a piece of paper, these four and five year old kids with a bottom burger bun and a top burger bun. And they got to put whatever they wanted on that. And it was so just seeing their emotions and seeing what they put on there and the reasoning and the rationale behind a four and five year old as to why they do things. It was really fun and, and exciting. And took these back and they gave me a big booklet of what they had done and uh looking through them and one kid had mud and ice cream on there and <laughs> i think that was a young ted but uh, <laughs> or or yesterday when we were talking on the phone yeah <laughs> age four wrote underneath of it um but there was kids with chinese food and spaghetti and it was awesome to just see some of the raw what they enjoyed and we took a couple of the burgers and kind of melded them together and it actually tasted pretty good. So we went back to the class and said, we're going to put it on our menu for the month of February and that we we're going to donate $2 from every burger sold to a local charity. So these four or five-year-old kids decided to donate to the food bank and raised funds and dry goods and took it over to the food bank and, and dropped it off. And halfway through that month with the response and the fun that we were having with it, we knew we needed to continue it. And yeah, we're now into into year five with it, and we're well over seventy two thousand dollars that our guests have purchased burgers, and it's it's all because of them and the guest chefs and those different organizations and charities in our own backyard to be able to keep doing this. Wow, that's amazing, and I'm glad I'm glad you got to tell that story. You know, we all see the burger <laughs> of the month and have obviously know that there's a story behind it and that community minded mm -hmm. aspect to it. But that's a pretty cool story, and I guess we'll let the cat out of the bag. Oh dear, is the guest chefs for the April burger of the month, and uh, I just got to ask too when you talk about the blank piece of paper and the four or five year old kids <laughs> and getting to sit there and watch the four of us throw ideas out there. I should have given you was, guys crayons. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> Oh. Yeah. Well, Dustin always has a, an emergency crayon pack in his car in case, <laughs> case you know what, in case we go to a restaurant and we, we need to keep him busy. But uh, yeah, I guess if anyone, you know what, maybe we'll let Ryan Lund talk about attempt to describe what the burger of the month is and then you can, you can correct him in describing the burger of the month. I just want to jump in here because as you were talking about the kids developing their burgers and their, the mud and the ice cream... I have never seen Mr. Lund more happy. He just <laughs> lit right up and, you know, talking about Chinese food on the burger, he, I can just tell he's got a lot of ideas right now. Yeah, so, yeah it's a good thing we picked our burger already. I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I, so I want to say, first off, it was a team effort when we came up with our burger. <laughs> I did have some input, um, as some of you can imagine, based on my... <laughs> my eating habits. <laughs> um, but Riley, when you mentioned on how it got started on the these grade four and grade five kids, sorry, age four and age five kids coming up with, with ideas, that's kind of how I felt when I was when I was coming up with ideas. Because I always like to had try new food combinations, see yeah. what sticks, <laughs> see what tastes good. Uh, most of the time it doesn't work, but sometimes you get it just right. And I think we nailed it with this burger of the month. So uh, I'm going to attempt to explain what we've created here. Uh, we wanted to have a real a real red deer themed burger, um, so we we have a an elk patty, kind of kind of playing off the the old deer name. Um, as well, we have some some bacon jam, which I I didn't know existed until now. So thanks, Chef Ryan, for 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 adding that to the burger. Just to um, be, be clear, clear, you're yeah. not Chef Ryan. No, they clear, have yeah. an actual <laughs> chef. Let's make that clear. Ryan, that's clear. Not, but I mean, that is how you would have signed your picture. Yeah, I mean that's. <laughs> That's just my online name, Chef Ryan. Uh, and next up, I'm really proud of this next idea. We have Doritos. 
<laughs> now, if anyone has, like, I'm pretty sure, I, I've never met one person that doesn't like Doritos. So it adds a real crunch, a real character to the burger. And then it's, then we also add some mac and cheese because, I mean, everyone who's grown up ever, <laughs> gone to college, has had mac and cheese. I had mac and cheese last week and I still love it. <laughs> and then to top it off on top of the burger, we have a beer battered onion ring uh, and the beer and the batters, it, it's it's provided by Trouble Monk's beer. I don't know how they do it, but it's it's a monster onion. And <laughs> they just pour beer on top yeah. of it. <laughs> it, it, it. It The presentation of this burger looks awesome. I mean... It's not going to, you're not going to hit any diet goals with this burger, but you're, <laughs> you are going to love it. So if you're looking for gains, you might, yeah, if you're trying to have <laughs> you're gonna gains, get gains, you're yeah. going to enjoy it. So I'm, I'm pretty proud of what we've come up with and I don't know. I don't know if I got all the ingredients no. right, Riley, but yeah, you hit, you hit them all. Uh, that's yeah. uh, pretty solid. Oh. The other uh, aspect is the troubled monk open road, uh, right. the brown barbecue sauce on there too. So that you nice wanted work. to get put on yeah. and you forgot about it. But yeah, so as you can see, it's a pretty local burger. A lot of community support. A lot of community businesses went into this. And yeah, hopefully hopefully we can encourage everyone to come get one or seven burgers uh, in the month of uh, <laughs> in the month of April. And, and Riley, I think the, the elk is locally sourced as well, correct? Yeah, so it's yeah. from one of the farms that we've been working with from, uh, from day one that we opened the restaurant back in 2012. So big shout out to MSW Farms, a, a local family farm just west of Pinoca that has elk bison and longhorn and have been an incredible supporter of us for several years so it's awesome and i think yeah i think you nailed it i think it, it's the rebels red ale is the the onion ring yep. batter i think was was the only thing you missed so it's uh that's a great burger two dollars from every burger is going to go to uh what we decided on for our charitable organization is called Heroes Hockey. They're actually right now, they're across Canada. They're set up in Calgary and Edmonton in Alberta. It's to help bring them to Red Deer. So their superheroes program actually is a once a week program for athletes with physical and cognitive disabilities. So we'll talk about it. The four of us will talk about it a bit more after this, but it's a really impressive program, really unique. There, there's not a lot out there and it, it's breaking down barriers for athletes who wouldn't normally get to play hockey and it's an incredible organization you're going to hear more from it from us so just for everyone out there that is who we're supporting so uh, we really hope you come in support cilantro and chive get this burger with with two dollars every two dollars going to, to superheroes hockey so so riley you know obviously huge thank you to you and your team for having us out to do the burger of the month i think it's it's been a super fun process for us and, and, and obviously an accomplishment that Ted had on our list to, <laughs> to check that box is, is pretty no, cool three months one. in. Uh, <laughs> but just, you know, somebody who, maybe explain for someone who hasn't been to Cilantro and Chive thus far in Red Deer or, or maybe out to your restaurant in Lacombe, like, you know, maybe maybe touch on your menu and, and your beer selection here because it is quite extensive and it has this great menu. Uh, yeah, we, we definitely have a local focus from the craft beer. I, uh, I think we're at about 125 to 130 craft beers. Uh, we've got 22 taps uh, here as well, too. So 18 of those are, are local beer focused, as well as some uh, craft sodas, uh, craft lemonade as well, too, from our friends at Snake Lake. And uh, we really want to be able to to showcase and support those uh, the local producers and suppliers that we do have right in our own backyard. So from MSW to uh, Brown Eggs and Lamb to uh, some of the local greenhouses that we work with as well. It's it's all a bit of a celebration of local. So we try and get as much local produce as we can throughout the uh, throughout the year. Every three months we swap out uh, a few menu items. So we're looking at our next menu uh, change happening April 6th with about uh, eight items coming off and nine or 10 going on. So we're always bringing on some new items and just having some fun. And you're going to find some stuff that you won't find in any other place. You're not going to find a beef burger that's just got beef and cheese on it here. We're, we're taking that comfort food and jacking it up to the next level. Perfect. And can I just say this, this patio is, <laughs> is amazing. I know uh, I've, I've been here beforehand with, with previous owners and the patio hasn't really been utilized. Uh, as much as as I'm sure they would have liked to, I know you've got big plans for the patio this summer, and I, I you and me were chatting earlier about the the renos that were that were made with these garage door style windows. Um, maybe just talk about if you have any big plans for for this summer, assuming assuming things kind of get back a little bit normal and we can kind of get out and meet friends at, at the restaurant. Yeah, we're definitely kind of at the mercy of COVID regulations and the government right now, but uh, 
We just installed two garage doors on the patio here that uh, open up to the bar inside. So we're able to bring a little bit of outside inside and inside outside to have some fun with that. We've got some some patio lights that'll be going up. We've got a, a fire table here with some some couches and stuff as well too. Some social tables and some individual tables. So we really want to just have some fun. At the end of the day, it's, it's all about having a good time. And we've got some plans in the works for some cast nights out on the patio and whether we can have some live entertainment out here and just having a good time, letting the worries of the week kind of slip away and share some drinks and not physically, of course, but uh, <laughs> have some fun. I got to say, I, I think March 12th might be the earliest I've ever had a patio beer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This, so, is, this is awesome. It's, it's awesome. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, 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 cheers to everyone yeah. for being on the patio. Yeah, yeah. cheers. This early. Did March uh, 12th fall on a Monday this year? <laughs> It doesn't matter. Yeah, it's Monday morning. Yeah. Monday morning. <laughs> it's, uh, so, what, Riley, what I really like about the place, too, is – and just meeting you, really, we've only known you for about three hours total <laughs> in the last couple of weeks. We could tell, you know, the, the restaurant, the setup in there. I know some of it's for COVID, but in general, yep. it's really – you could tell it's an extension of your personality, which I think is really cool. And, you know, you got the doors in there and stuff, and I want to know – what what you went through to get all those doors? Because I already know. I was hoping I was I was hoping this question was going to come up. Oh, where are we where are we posting this podcast? Uh, yeah, no, it uh, we we hit up a lot of rural farms, and uh, some of them were a little bit sketchier than others. Uh, but we definitely took a lot of old windows, old doors. Uh, we're up to, up in Edmonton, out east of Drumheller south down to Pincher Creek and the Crow's Nest Pass and Lumbrick picking up doors and definitely wanting to try and create a bit of a unique atmosphere and definitely not using the plexiglass or the shower curtains and each business needs to do their own thing and for us that just didn't fit our mentality we we wanted to make sure that we were really creating a welcoming place and let's be real COVID sucks the, the world right now isn't where we'd like to be but we're going to make the best of it and have some fun and try and take the cares away from, from the stress of the world. So yeah, some of the farms, I was definitely checking <laughs> cell service going, <laughs> going in and out of barns to yeah. try and find some windows, but you drop a pin like to your wife, Hey, this is where I am. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't hear from me in two minutes, this is, this is a uh, crime scene zero, but uh, yeah, no, there was some really great, uh, great people that we met along the way, trying to find some doors and some windows and yeah. We joked in the first stages that we were going to take all the doors and windows and have a bonfire in the parking lot when COVID was oh, over. But that'd be awesome. There's definitely some aspects that will stick around for a while. So, and what about the the penny wall or the penny along the bar? What what went into that? Because there's there's a lot. <laughs> yeah. Again, we urge you to come in and and check it out too. You'll you'll notice it when you come in. Yeah. I think it's really cool. But there's got to be like that's more than Lund's piggy bank for sure. Yeah, I don't know how yeah. long how long how long yeah. have you been saving? <laughs> well, I don't collect pennies, so yeah, it's more than I have my. Pe- there's gotta be there's gotta be a million pennies out there, right? <laughs> uh, doing the math, uh, yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I didn't count them individually by any stretch. We did the rough math and figured we need about three hundred and sixty dollars worth of pennies for the bar. I think that was a little bit of an oversight, but we've got some pennies for location four, three, four, three. Oh. So. And I, I don't even know if I'm supposed to say this or not, but let's bring it up right now because <laughs> you know, as, as we talk about the burger of the month and, and we came in last week and, and we saw the penny bar and thought this would be a pretty cool contest for the old dear boys to count the pennies on the bar since you didn't know. So Ted, I mean, <laughs> Ted always complains about how he has no time, but <laughs> somehow he has time to come in and count those pennies if we're able to break. That's part of the job. I don't, I'm saying free time. This is. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But if we're able to break the sales record, which I believe is around $2,600 to charity yeah. for the burger of the month. If, if Odeer is able to break that sales record, Ted's going to come in here and count every penny on that bar. And we're going to run a social media contest and, and see if anyone can come anywhere close to how many are on there. So Ted's offered up his time to do that and certainly appreciate it. But I don't envy him one bit. No, and you know, it goes back to the snow shoveling bet too. It's whatever I can do. <laughs> you know what? And, and you know, as much as I hate people paying attention to me and being in the spotlight, <laughs> I'll do it for this because it's for a great cause. Yeah, and Ted, but, I'll, uh, be, I'll be here too, eating the burger while oh, yeah. Yeah, and I'll, I'll be here. I watch you count He's going to be here on a Saturday watching sports, drinking eight beers and counting <laughs> yeah. pennies. Like it's not, it's, not the, it's not the best. It won't be the worst, but again, I will put it out there. If we can, we can break that sales record, so it's like 1,300 burgers, so 
between the four of us, that only leaves like 200 for all the rest of you <laughs> to, to go and eat anyway. So it's not hard, but I will do it. And yeah, and then, then we'll do a, a fun giveaway on social media to see who can get the closest guests. So can, uh, guess. can hosts uh, guess? Yes, you can guess. Can, you can't win. Can, oh, okay. <laughs> Fair enough. We're all going to be sitting there drinking eight beers as well. Just well, I'm going to need you. a lot of people here. That's a lot of fingers and toes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, this place, we might have to wait till all, all regulations are gone because this place is, we're going to have to max it out in capacity here. Maybe I'll borrow my dad's abacus or something. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, there it is. And good on Dustin for picking up on my on my lead there on that one. Usually he misses those cues. I can by, see, uh, I can see your eyes through your sunglasses yeah. from this angle. <laughs> yeah. So that's actually perfect. Yeah. So yeah, no, like I said, I think the, the restaurant looks amazing and, and we've all had the chance to to dine here and that. And yeah, how how have you found it so far? Just being being in Red Deer, obviously we made the mistake of thinking we didn't need a reservation and i'm guessing even <laughs> when there's no no regulations and you can have more people in here that's always going to be the case so i'm going to go out on a limb and say like, you guys have been been swamped here obviously so far the support has been phenomenal and we're we're incredibly fortunate for that and um, we we want to continue that and have some fun and be able to give back in different ways so yeah we've got some pretty fun events we've got a little bit of a private room up in the back so we'll, we'll hopefully fingers crossed we'll be able to get back to a little bit more of the social atmosphere social vibe here uh coming up and be able to rent that out to people looking for some private rooms but talking with the uh rdc college and and getting the the chef apprentice program there out and doing some plated dinners and some local breweries doing some beer launches and couple of uh, distilleries have some whiskey launches coming down the pipe here this year too so hopefully we can get some whiskey tasting wine tasting beer launches and just genuinely have some fun i think one of the things i noticed you know the first time we met you and you know a week ago and one of the cool things that from an outsider's view of the restaurant business you, you think everyone's competing against each other and and, and one thing we've really you know figured out from you and and you know a few others in red deer that it's actually not true. You guys are trying to support each other. You, yourself, Brennan at Bose, Ryan at Famoso, I know Tribe. You guys got some cool stuff going on. And, and, and maybe touch on how important it is to to be one with the whole restaurant industry whether that, rather than just competing against everyone. Oh, man, I'm a chubby guy. I like food. And I like, <laughs> I like going out and checking out other places and having some good eats and some good drinks. So, I mean, when you talk about Brennan at Bose and, and what they've done there, absolutely phenomenal people there and always so welcoming every time we stop in. And Ryan at Famoso, we've had him as a guest chef in the past. And I can't get enough Cavaletti. So if, if, you're ever, <laughs> if you're ever looking for a way to my heart, a Cavaletti and a pint of Folding Mountain from uh, from Famoso is, is right there. But yeah, we've got some fun stuff coming down the pipe and we're, we're working with a couple of local restaurants. So I, I I think it's safe to say at this point, by the time this comes out, we're working with Famoso and Mr. Mike's. Uh, Wayne and Riley were just here not too long ago and uh, Tribe and Oakham's Razor and, and Bose to, to kind of share some some fun with Epitaph and Troubled Monk coming up for the month of April where we're all putting a Epitaph cocktail on and we're going to have a pretty awesome giveaway at the end of the month and really encourage people no matter where they're going to just either go out, su support their local establishments wherever they feel comfortable going and if they can t get takeout or buy a gift card or even just leave a positive review on any of their their favorite establishments. I mean, it's it's been a trying time for all of us and hopefully at the end of whatever the end of COVID is, is we can all come together a little bit more and just have some fun and celebrate what each individual place is doing and not necessarily look at each other as competition. And I think since you already gave the free ad, it is a good time to give a shout out to Ryan and Riley, the Bose, uh, Bose sound guys, you know, here doing the video, doing the mics for us, saving me a ton of time coming out, uh, you know, getting to try the burger with us too. So it's always a shout out to those two guys. Anytime they get to come out and, and have some fun with us, we really appreciate it. And just got to say on that note too, I think, you know, knowing that, I think why the four of us are so drawn to places like cilantro and chive or Bose is because Obviously, you're a business. You need to be successful, yeah. but you guys really are supporters of. You want Red Deer to be to have a, a great, you know, food scene. Yeah. You want it to be a food scene. So it's not just about your restaurant. It's about working together, building off each other. And I think that's that's why we like guys like you so much. And I think that's why why you guys are successful because everyone picks up on that. I appreciate that. I mean, the world is full of a lot of negativity, and you're either yes or you're no, and it's 
it's really kind of a less than favorable place to be. There's a lot of different great things going on in Red Deer and it's really easy to f pick out the negative. It's a little more difficult to sometimes find the positive, but just want to be a bit of a positive voice across it. And that's, I mean, that's why we've got you guys here too. And I appreciate you guys being so receptive to the idea of doing a burger of the month. And yeah, it was a tough choice. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, did we ever mull that one over. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, let's let's celebrate Red Deer, celebrate Central Alberta. There's so many great things going on that really don't get the limelight or the attention that they deserve. And let's focus on those rather than the negative that is so easy to find in absolutely everything. That's funny. You said that to me on the phone when we were talking. I thought, oh my God, I wish I recorded that. But <laughs> there, we, we got it. So that's perfect. <laughs> that's that's and we know you mean it it's I'm, obviously not like because you've said it a lot it's not because you've recited it it's because you mean it and say it a lot i'm thankful so. we didn't record that whole conversation yeah. but. <laughs> hey believe me i'm glad ted doesn't record a lot of what i say too. <laughs> <laughs> we actually cut a lot of what you say that's recorded too yeah fair enough yeah. Uh, riley do you have any advice to uh let's say new, new people that want to get into the restaurant in industry or somebody that wants to start up a new 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 uh business in in red deer here yeah, that's such a loaded question right there, for sure. Um, in all honesty, no matter what you do, whether it is starting a restaurant, starting a business, or working for somebody, just have fun. Do you, and enjoy what you're doing. I mean, life sucks, work sucks. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it really does at the end of the day, but you can have some fun. And I, I really hope that a lot of our team has a lot of fun with what they're doing, too. We, we, we don't necessarily hire for X cookie cutter mold. We hire for each personality. And our staff is absolutely phenomenal. Every day they challenge me and push me on on what we're doing and why we're doing it and how we're doing it. And it really gives us a lot of inward reflection. But in all honesty, just be you. Do you. Find what you enjoy. That sounds like it could be on a t-shirt or something. Yeah. That's that's yeah. pretty good. Well, maybe that's throw it on that a new, down. <laughs> new staff t-shirt in the back. Yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of t-shirts, I got to say, your staff's <laughs> walking around with shirts going like a, with a, I forget what it, what the review was. Like, if you <laughs> like weird food, go here. Yeah. One star from Ted. Yeah. And that is not me. <laughs> <laughs> so after that, I'm going, the first thing I do is I'm going on Yelp or whatever it is and giving you a five-star <laughs> review so that if you ever want to make different shirts... <laughs> In, in do, contrast, do four and a half. Yeah, Nobody yeah. believes half? a five That's, star. Yeah. Do four and a half. Although, yeah. <laughs> There's always room for Unless, improvement. Yeah, I don't know. Four and a half stars for me is like, okay, the food was good, but you gave me salmonella. <laughs> Otherwise, like, I'm not very picky with food. So five star review for me is pretty honest. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take a five star from you. I guess, <laughs> yeah. if yeah. That's the option. Yeah, you won't get salmonella here. Nope. <laughs> Ted, I know this is a podcast and everything, but if you can just take a peek through the garage door right now, there's the guy wearing the <laughs> Ted shirt right yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, at least you've learned that it's a podcast. You know how much we had to cut of Dustin nodding to the camera instead of saying the word yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, Ted's review was from way back in the day from Pinoca. And uh yeah, we've we've had some fun with Ted. Ted's <laughs> review. Have you, ever, um, have you ever met the guy? No, I haven't. But no? his wife liked uh, one of our posts the other day, a couple <laughs> couple weeks back, about the t-shirts that said, "If you like weird food, go here." And so we ended up having a good conversation with her on some private message and sent her off a, a t-shirt. But oh, we, awesome. haven't, we haven't seen Ted in a Ted t-shirt yet, so I'm not sure how it went. But uh, well, hopefully, they'll give you two stars next time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we. Yeah, we are. Uh, I don't know. I we are weird food, I guess, to some people, and that's that's quite all right. We just do what we do. Well, our burger of the month's gonna fit in. Let's just find fine. Ted. <laughs> Let's find Ted and make him eat this burger. Yeah. So I'm gonna switch gears on you a little bit. Me being the business guy, I'm just curious. You know, I just would like you to touch on a little bit about the SAIT program you went to. Yeah. And then how much of it was business versus more, you know, food related? And then how, how big was the learning curve and what were some mistakes maybe you found learning the business side of things? Yeah. Let's, I know uh, there's a uh, lot. How, how <laughs> much time do we have to go into the mistakes here? Uh, yeah, no, the seat program was, was really good. There was a lot of great chefs through that. Uh, definitely pushed me and a lot of challenges for sure. I definitely did not appreciate it at the time. I have a lot more appreciation for it now. Um, but uh, I went out into the real world and uh, learned some skills and worked in a lot of places and learn some good traits and some traits that we won't do here but uh, <laughs> I also wasn't necessarily the best model employee at a, a lot of those by any stretch either but uh, I was fortunate enough to go back to school and take the uh, hospitality and tourism program here at RDC before it moved to Olds and 
still have a really great relationship with those uh, instructors that have moved off to Olds. And we had the Olds uh, tourism program here just earlier today and chatting with them about where we are and where we came from. And it's it's really awesome to be able to to be able to give back. And it's just my ideas and my thoughts and feelings. And hopefully a lot of them go on to different things. But it uh, it's definitely helped. But we've made a whole lot of mistakes throughout our years. But we've also took a whole lot of risks as well, too. Right. And you have to. Absolutely. And, and I'm sure you'll agree you never learn more than when you mess up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's it's been great. I mean, absolutely. We've we've done some stuff that uh, hasn't worked and we've done some stuff that has absolutely worked. And we don't uh, sit there and dwell on our uh, mistakes by any stretch. We shift gears and focus on what has worked and take some of it and learn with it and go. So can I uh, can I make a prediction? Because I I think I'm one for one with my prediction yeah. so far. <laughs> yeah, you are. Uh, so I'm going to keep my streak going here. Yeah. Um, my prediction for this summer is that this patio is going to be one of the one of the best patios in Red Deer. <laughs> oh um, yeah! So it's it's not really a hot take, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna keep my streak alive with that. Uh, you and heard go it for here two first. for two. Yeah, yeah, you can take that to the bank. Can I make a bold prediction that you're gonna order this burger and not get a salad? Because that's a, that's about the same. But no, yeah. I agree. I think I think I think you're right. I think you're gonna be right. On I think this. if you order a salad with this burger, you're just lying to yourself. Yeah. So that's why like I said the double Big Mac, extra large fries, but and a Coke. No, 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 Diet Coke, yeah. please. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, yeah. I appreciate the Sate shout out too because I did. I went there too in the radio program and that yeah. culinary program. I think I ate lunch there because they they do the the lunch in yeah. the one cafeteria. I ate there a ton. So a lot of appreciation for that program. Yeah, it was. I had a lot of more fun than I probably should have. I took a lot of uh, a lot of classes at uh, local Lou's across the street. And <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> local the gateway, <laughs> the gateway is Yeah, on. it was. Uh, it was yeah. Sparty's back in the day. So uh, kinda, a lot of overnighters. Oh yeah, I've, yeah. I've walked into local Lou's a few times and tried to get served and <laughs> had to clear up from the night before before they would serve me. But uh, yeah, no, it was good times. So. <laughs> Well, I guess one thing now, Walsh, good to touch on the, the business end of things, being a social media guy, uh, long before, you know, for the longest time, I know I saw you and, and Ryan from Formoso spoke at a social media breakfast here too in Red Deer, but you guys do social media so well and you have so much fun with it. And, and I got to know too, like, is that, I know you're part of it. How many people do you have running that too? And how do you come up with that stuff? Because 20,000 followers for a restaurant <laughs> then from Lacombe is incredible. We're just under 20, so thanks for bringing yeah. that up. I <laughs> yeah. appreciate, appreciate that. I round job. it up. Yeah. I round it up for us. We're also 20,000 yeah. if I'm going to round up. Yeah, so. Yeah. How many accounts does your mom have? <laughs> uh, no, you, you'd think that there's 40 or 50 people on our social media aspect, but uh, Jason Burns takes a really strong role in that and uh, really leads that uh, program and has done a phenomenal job in, in engaging and interacting. And I, I do a lot of uh, my best to respond to as many comments and engagements as well, too. But yeah, it's uh, our team takes a lot of pictures and we just, again, just have, genuinely have some fun with it. And no different than anybody coming into our four walls. We want anybody interacting with us through social media to be able to have the same same engagement they would if they were coming in the door. Yeah, and that's that's what I like about it a lot too. I felt like you know the first time I was here, felt like I already knew everything about it <laughs> about you guys and stuff. And going back now to Lacombe, I'm curious too. Or we talk a lot about Red Deer in this yep. podcast, celebrate Red Deer, but really we should too be celebrating Central Alberta because Lacombe's a great place, and you should get a badge or an award or something, I don't know, a Nobel Prize, because Dustin Moore, when we say, hey, let's go for beers, he'll pick the place closest to his house. If we pick something that's more than five minutes away, he either won't come or he'll complain or change it. He, he I remember he would be so excited to drive out to Lacombe for, for cilantro, well, cilantro and I chai. I mean, Caesar's like a meal. If anyone <laughs> hasn't had a Caesar's like a meal... It's in Red Deer now, so come and try it. But that was literally the reason I went out there. Their social media, I followed them, and I saw a Caesar on top or a, a burger on top of a Caesar. And and who can't drive out to Lacombe for that? So, and I will say, I'll drive anywhere for beers with anyone. But when it's you guys on the 
yeah. out by Alex Alberta and Timberstone, it, it gets a little frustrating sometimes. That's not okay. You can't say you'll go anywhere for anyone, but oh, I don't want to go out to. It is ten <laughs> minutes it's straight down the well, road. I can tell you what, Slatter and Chive is a lot closer. <laughs> yeah. so. Me and Dustin are going to ride our bikes here in ten minutes yeah. in the summer. Yeah. We already worked it out. Yeah, you never ride your bike over to my house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> Fun fact on the Caesars at Eat Like a Meal, we ended up being in American Airlines in-flight magazine. Oh, wow. With, with our Caesar, yeah. Like, we had no idea that we were in that magazine, and we had to try and get our hands on that. And So did, it, did someone just send a picture in randomly, and you just... Somebody sent a picture to a friend that was from Lacombe to Hans Doof, and said, hey, Lacombe's in American Airlines in-flight magazine, <laughs> sent the picture to us, and we had no idea that we were even there. So then it was a, a bit of a race to try and find one of those magazines that just got pulled from production the day before, and we ended up, uh, a friend of ours worked for WestJet and found a couple of those magazines, but that page was ripped out on every <laughs> single one that they found. So it was a bit of a fiasco. I think it was like six months later that we found one. It might have been in a recycle depot somewhere, but uh, yeah, it was blew us away that uh, we were in there for sure. Red Deer's just got to become an international airport now. Yeah. <laughs> That's your step one to step, an international airport. Yeah. getting the international so, status. <laughs> the last question I'm going to ask is how did it feel when we sat down with you and met you last week when Ryan Lunn suggested that you should start putting <laughs> sliders on top of other things as so, a menu item? So I was so, thinking so. <laughs> of a slider on top of our burger of the month. But and then I found out after that they already this, the burger is on top of Caesars. So I guess you're one step ahead of me on that yeah, one. Yeah. You were uh, you're revolutionary. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, no, it's it's uh, it's a lot of fun. There was on a Red Deer buy and sell actually just a couple yesterday. Somebody posted a Caesar that had a I don't know a Big Mac or something on there. It was a little. Little subpar, but uh, asked if there was anywhere in Red Deer to get it, and I think uh, I think that post is up to 170 some comments. And <laughs> everybody except for like five or six have commented cilantro and chive. Nobody's. Oh, you were one of those five or six. <laughs> yeah. Probably. Yeah. Man, that's a great idea. Oh, yeah. man. Cool I just idea. thought of that yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's really it's really quite humbling that uh, people think of us in such high lights. So <laughs> yeah, tell your mom and her six accounts that she's got <laughs> we appreciate it yeah what's a burner account i don't know what you're talking about yeah i'll ask my uh, last question for you here riley mm -hmm. do you uh do you have a favorite beer right now or a favorite meal that you like to have when you're oh. you're here favorite meal i mean the mac and cheese balls we've got on the menu right now are pretty clutch just pop a little mac and cheese balls in your mouth and away you go yeah but yeah in all honesty our, and this is just not stereotypical by any stretch but our menu is some of the solid best menu it's ever been we've got a new menu launch coming out out april 6th as well too we we're doing some samples just the other day and yeah it, it's it's solid pretty jacked for that as far as uh as far as beers go i'm a i'm an equal opportunity kind of fellow it just depends on my mood yeah some of the beers coming out of central alberta absolutely phenomenal uh, we've got some really great breweries really great beer in our own backyard which is I mean, it's it's always great to support local, but when that local is quality and, and consistent, it's even better. So uh, I kind of plead the fifth on what's my favorite beer right now, <laughs> but uh, just uh, sipping on a little craft beer Commonwealth uh, Landlock Ale right now and definitely enjoying that. So. Well, Riley, we'll, we'll let you go here because the sun is literally setting <laughs> on this it, cats on out this of the bag too. Morning, it's, on it's this Friday, Monday morning. It's Friday afternoon. It's uh we we just did that as a little bit of a joke. Yeah, I hope we're it not worked. we're not that hardcore alcohol. No, I think everyone believed us too. <laughs> right? yeah, when we drink on Monday morning at 10 a.m. It's only at the farmers market. Yeah. Yeah. It's it, we're more of indoor mo Monday morning drinkers and outdoor <laughs> Friday afternoon drinkers. But Riley, thank you so much for having us. You know, we're we honestly we're so honored to be a part of the burger of the month. It's it's a lot of fun. It's for a great cause and we gotta have have a lot of fun doing it and and the burgers we got to taste today and that like i mean i'm not gonna have to eat until dinner tomorrow in which case i'm just <laughs> gonna come back here anyways <laughs> um but you know, we really appreciate it we're so happy to see you guys have the success in red deer and add add to that the success you're having in lacombe and you know, we appreciate it's only been a couple months for you and you're already a huge part of the red deer community so so thank you for that and, and of course thanks for having us and get used to these faces because you're gonna i predict we're gonna be here a lot this summer thank you very much oh thank you i appreciate you guys coming out and appreciate having some fun and again let's just 
continue having a good time. And uh, in Red Deer in Central Alberta, there's so much to celebrate. And this patio, uh, yeah, I mean, we knew it was going to be fun, but uh, sitting out here today, I'm jacked. Oh, dear.